Apple Music or Spotify? Which sounds better? Which has more songs? And which should you pick? Well, we put them to the test and conducted some experiments, so let's talk about it. We're going to be comparing two of the biggest players, Spotify and Apple Music, in three key areas. We're going to compare the sound quality of both platforms, which platform is more likely to have the songs that you want, and lastly, we're going to have a look at which might win you over just because of the extra features that they offer. Let's start with the available library of songs on each platform. It's a little bit tricky to find exact information as to how many songs are on each platform. Both of them claim to have over 100 million songs, but then so do Tidal, Cobas, and Amazon Music, and yet many people, including myself, have found instances where where specific songs or albums are missing from one service or another. So, rather than just look at the numbers, I put this to a real-world test. I asked DMS and Resolve to each give me a playlist of about 20 to 30 songs from various different genres that they listen to now and then, and I made one myself as well. And then I just checked which of those songs is available or missing from each platform. My playlist was a little bit more focused on the electronic side of things, with tracks from Gidge, Drolo, and BT, but with some jazz and acoustic stuff from the likes of Her, Manokache, etc. I could find 97% of tracks on Spotify and 100% on Apple Music. Spotify was missing a particular orchestral rendition of Molossus from the Batman soundtrack, but Apple Music did have that. DMS's playlist, which is a little bit more into the acoustic side, although pop influence with some Alt-J, Everything Everything, and Big Thief, that had 100% of tracks on Spotify and 100% on Apple Music, so no issues there. And lastly, Resolve's playlist, which is quite jazz-focused, as Tingval Trio, Yossi Horikawa, and some Eric Clapton as well, that again had 100% on Spotify and 100% on Apple Music. So it seems that for these two services, regardless of what genres you are into, you're going to be able to find basically all of your music on either platform. Spotify has been around a very long time and Apple Music, even before it was Apple Music, Apple had iTunes. So both companies have had a very long time to build up their music libraries and it's no surprise that they are both about as good as it gets here. Maybe slightly better on Apple Music if you're a classical music fan specifically. They even have a dedicated classical music app which provides extra browsing features for classical music. But generally, for most people, either of these platforms is going to have everything you want. Keep in mind though, this test has a relatively small sample size of just under 100 songs. This is intended to be a slightly more real-world way of checking things versus just looking at the 100 million figure that they provide, but just because we found 100% of songs in our playlists doesn't necessarily mean they have 100% of songs in your library. And whilst both of these services did very well in this test, that's absolutely not the case for all streaming services though. I have tested some other ones which were missing quite a number of these tracks. Okay, so you've got all the music that you want, but which of these two services is actually going to sound better? Well, neither of these services are messing about with the actual file itself. They're not remastering things or EQing things, so as long as the artist or label has provided the exact same file to each streaming service, they should sound pretty similar. Most streaming services do have guidelines for publishers, for things like loudness for instance, but these are guidelines, not rules, and they're not changing things to conform with these themselves. Even if the artist has given the exact same master file to two different streaming services though, there are two factors which are going to affect what kind of sound quality you as the listener get. The main one being, what is the streaming service actually giving to you? Are they streaming that same master file directly to you, or are they streaming a compressed and lower quality version? In terms of the quality of the stream file, Apple Music absolutely has the win here. Spotify offers 320 kilobits per second compressed streaming to their premium paying members, whereas Apple Music offers lossless streaming, meaning full 1,411 kilobits per second for most music, and they even have some high-res files available too. But does streaming compressed through something like Spotify versus lossless at nearly five times the bitrate actually produce an audible benefit, or is it just more for the sake of more? Well, I put this to the test by doing a blind ABX test. I took the compressed version from Spotify and the lossless version from Apple Music, and I used the FUBAR ABX plugin to compare them. And whilst the difference was not massive, Spotify's compression is very good, and depending on what headphones or speakers you're using, what track you're listening to, how good your hearing is, you might not be able to tell, but I was able to tell the difference between the two 14 out of 15 times, so if you have the gear for it, I would say that going lossless is a meaningful upgrade. And hey, if you're wanting to upgrade your gear to get absolutely every last ounce of detail out of your music that you can, headphones.com is the place to do it. There's even a 365 day return policy, so if you buy something and you don't like it, you can send it back, no questions asked. So. 
Apple Music absolutely takes the win over Spotify for the quality of files that they stream to you, having lossless for their entire library and high-res tracks for a lot of it too, but I can't give them a clean sweep. The second factor to the quality that you as a listener will get out of a streaming service is not just whether the file that they stream to you is lossless, it's can their software actually play that file losslessly? It's not really a huge benefit to have lossless files if your computer or your phone is then going to be altering things before it gets sent to your DAC anyway. That's also a reason why I use the FUBAR ABX tool for that comparison earlier rather than this website that you may have come across before. That website, whilst it's interesting, is not playing the lossless files losslessly, so it's not really a fair comparison. And Apple Music can't play lossless files in all situations. This is a chart of the two services with the four main platforms. Spotify, due to not having lossless files available in the first place, gets a flat nope down the column, unfortunately. But let's look closer at Apple Music. On iOS, the way the system handles audio is pretty good. It doesn't alter the data that's coming from the application to the DAC in any way other than for volume control. So if you want to output a 192 kilohertz high-res file, it will take the exact same data that the streaming service is providing and give that straight to your DAC without being changed. It is bit perfect. Excellent. On Android, though, the system has a bit of a quirk where all audio gets resampled to 48 kilohertz. So not only will the vast majority of music, which is 44.1 kilohertz, get resampled and processed by the system to convert it to 48 kilohertz, you also can't take advantage of the high res files that are available on Apple Music because those are nice 192 kilohertz files just get downsampled to 48 kilohertz. For macOS users, you'd think Apple Music will just work, right? Well, it sort of does. It can play lossless music if you go into your MIDI settings and manually set the sample rate to match whatever the song you're playing is. If you don't do that, the music gets resampled. But luckily, you can also automate this process with a nice handy tool called Lossless Switcher. There's a link to that in the description. If you use this, that will automatically change your sample rate to match whatever is playing, and everything is fine. It is bit perfect, other than whatever volume control you're doing. So Mac users can play lossless music, they just need the help of a third-party tool to do it. On Windows, the system handles audio in one of two ways. You can either output to the OS mixer. This is what most programs do. The OS mixer will just take all of the audio from all of the different software running on your PC, mix it together, and output the combined results to your output device. But if you do this, your audio is being messed with, it's being processed and changed a bit. And even if nothing else is playing and you've got your sample rate set correctly, your audio is not bit perfect, it is still being altered. To get around this problem, many audio-specific programs like digital audio workstations and music players will offer an exclusive mode output option, which means they take exclusive control of a single output device and they bypass the OS mixer. All of the audio comes straight from that program to your output device. It does not get changed by the system. It is bit perfect. Some streaming services players will have this as an option so that you can get lossless music straight to your device. Unfortunately, Apple is not one of them. On iTunes on PC, Apple doesn't even give you the option at all to stream high-res files, because I guess if you don't have a Mac, then you don't deserve it. You can if you go to the Windows Store and download the beta Apple Music Preview app, but with no exclusive mode output option on either of these two software choices, even if they stream a lossless or high-res file to you, you can't play it losslessly. So overall, Apple Music absolutely takes the win over Spotify for music quality generally, but you have to have an Apple device in order to be able to fully take advantage of it. If you're on Windows or Android, that difference in quality is probably going to be much less apparent. And if you are willing to get the most quality possible you can on those platforms, get subscribed for part two when we'll be talking about Tidal and Cobuzz. But it's not all about the music quality. There are many other reasons why you might want to use a particular streaming service, and each of them are doing new things to provide extra value to their customers. Spotify is offering podcasts within the app, which whilst Apple also has their own podcast delivery app, Spotify signed quite a few exclusive agreements, so if you're a Louis Theroux or a Joe Rogan fan, for instance, you're going to have to go there to get that. Spotify has also added audiobooks to their service recently, giving their premium members 15 hours of listening each month for free. Recommendations are a big part of how people find and discover new music nowadays, and both Apple and Spotify have similar ways of discovering new music, with Apple Music's Discovery Station and Spotify's Discover Weekly playlist both offering up tracks the services think you're going to enjoy, as well as mood and genre-specific playlists. This one's pretty hard to determine a clear winner, and your experience might differ from mine. My experience was that Spotify was much more consistent in providing songs I liked enough to add to my library, whereas Apple Music was a little bit more hit or miss. But I've also just been using Spotify for longer, so it could just be that Apple Music's algorithm hasn't quite learned what I like yet. 
What I will say is a definitive win for Spotify in my books is the remote control and multi-room features. Apple might have AirPlay casting, but Spotify can use that too, and Spotify Connect is much more tightly integrated into a wide range of devices like Google Chromecast, Sonos, and I can even move seamlessly from listening on my phone or my PC to in my car and be able to remote control all of those with my phone as well. Apple Music might be a little bit more up to par here if you're very deep into their ecosystem and have a lot of Apple devices, but again, Spotify can make use of those too, so I think Spotify definitely takes the win here. So, both services have excellent libraries, though Apple Music is technically ranking number one at the moment in terms of our number of tracks found test. Spotify has some additional software capabilities and features that Apple Music does not, but Apple Music has the edge in terms of music quality, especially if you are using an Apple device. So which of these services to pick is probably going to come down to which of those is more important to you, some slightly better software and features, or some better sound quality, at least until Spotify releases their own lossless streaming tier, which could just be around the corner. Hopefully this comparison helped you out, and if you want to see us compare Amazon Music, Tidal, Cobas, and anything else, leave a comment down below if there's something you want to suggest, then get subscribed for part two. If you've got any questions about this or anything else relating to gear, music, or anything at all, then join the Headphones.com Discord server or the Headphones.com forum, and I and other Wiggly Air enthusiasts will endeavor to help. I'm Golden Sound, you're watching The Headphones Show by Headphones.com. I'll see you next time.